Friday, December 9. There exists a foundation which claims that it is creating technology that will allow us to contact the deceased via texts, phone calls and video conferencing. Calling the dead PMPs, post-material persons, its website claims that when humans die, they simply pass on into another phase of forever, but retain their consciousness, identity and core aspects of their previous physical form. But most important, the soul phone folks claim to be developing in three phases technology that will allow communication between material and post-material persons. The first phase will allow texting and typing with post-material family friends and experts in every field of expertise. Phase 2 is supposed to enable talking with your dear ones who are living in another part of forever. And the third phase, it says, will open the way to hearing and seeing those who are experiencing the field of all possibilities from a different observation point. Especially scary is how they test if the communicating dead are really who they claim to be. For example, the site says, a bereaved parent might ask the following question of a son or daughter who has changed worlds. Did you have a dog named Snoopy when you were a child? Did we give you a pocket knife for your 10th birthday? How interesting, in light of this warning, we read in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 684, spiritual beings sometimes appear to persons in the form of their deceased friends and relate incidents connected with their lives and perform acts which they performed while living. End of quote. And that brings us to our three discussion questions this week. One, using the excuse of being culturally acceptable, many Christians consume whatever the media promotes. While biblical principles should guide our relationship with the media, especially when it openly promotes views that we know are wrong and deceptive. Let's have a look at Psalm 101 verses 1 to 8. I will sing of mercy and justice to you, O Lord, I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbour, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes shall be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. And Proverbs 4 and verse 23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. And Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And at number two. How can we help others to overcome Satan's end-time deceptions without being exposed to the deceiving influence of those very same deceptions ourselves? And three, many Christians have seen the story of having Samuel summoned from the grave as biblical proof that the dead live on. What does this account teach us about why we cannot rely only on a single text or story to build a doctrine, but instead we must look at all that the Bible says about a topic? And now for Inside Story, a mission story with Sibella. Thank you, Sibella. A Daring Witness by Rick McEdward at the beginning of the semester, a university classmate asked Sandra if he could take a picture of her class notes with his cell phone. I saw that you were writing in English, he said. I want to improve my English. Classes were not taught in English at the university in the Middle East, but English was Sandra's native language and she found it easier to take notes in English. 
Here you are, Sandra said, extending her notebook. The next day, the classmate again asked for permission to take pictures. After the classmate asked to take pictures for several days in a row, Sandra decided to be more intentional with her notes. She resolved to write favourite Bible verses at the bottom of the pages of her notebook. The next time the classmate asked to take a picture, however, Sandra felt a jolt of fear. She worried that he would notice the verses and stop asking to see her notes. She prayed that God would use the Bible verses for his glory. The classmate did not seem to notice the Bible verses at first. But after a couple of days, he realised that the notes contained information that the teacher had not mentioned during the class lectures. He went to Sandra and pointed to a verse at the bottom of a page. Is this a verse from the Bible, he asked. Yes, Sandra said, her mind racing as she wondered how to explain it. The classmate paused. Is this the way you motivate yourself, he asked. Sandra smiled with relief. Exactly, she said. I write my favourite verses in my notebook. They are always really helpful and useful for my life. After that day, the classmate asked Sandra many questions about her religion and beliefs. As they studied together at the university, he also learned about the beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. At the end of the semester, he asked to make a copy of Sandra's entire verse-filled notebook. He wanted to share the notes with his siblings. Although Sandra has not studied with him again, the two have kept in touch, and he regularly asks for advice about life. Sandra is praying for him, his siblings and the rest of his family. She thanks God for giving her the daring idea to write Bible verses at the bottom of the pages of her notebook. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.